Ladies and gentlemen, the origins of the environmental movement as we see it began back in 1968 when the Club of Rome was formed. The Club of Rome has been described as a crisis think tank which specialises in crisis creation. The main, purpose of this, mm, the main purpose of this think tank was to formulate a crisis that would unite the world and condition us to the idea of global solutions to local problems. In a document called The First Global Revolution, authored by Alexander King and Bertrand Schneider, on pages 104 and 105, it stated, in searching for a new enemy to unite us, we came up with the idea that pollution, the threat of global warming, water shortages, famine and the like would fit the bill. All these dangers, of course, will be caused by human intervention that will require a global response. That's the origin of global warming, ladies and gentlemen. In 1975, Australia agreed to bring in a new economic order via the Lima Declaration on the Second Conference of the United Nations Industrial Development Organisation. The outcome of this was, as I said, the Lima Declaration, which was a blueprint for the redeployment of tools, jobs and manufacturing to the developing nations, leaving countries like Australia short of technology, a manufacturing base and jobs. Blind Freddy can now see what the outcome of that has been for our country with their unworkable trade and tariffs agreements hand in hand with this that have followed as a matter of course. This is now a reality with around 90% of our agriculture and manufacturing just gone. Australia signed the Lima Declaration in a, and hundreds of others with the support of all major political players. Whitlam, Fraser, Hawke, Keating, Hewson, Howard, Rudd, the Democrats, the Greens and even the Nationals. It has been put to me that all of these treaties were the foundation for the rollout of Agenda 21 and it seems that Australia has been moved around the global chessboard and our so-called leaders were either complicit or naive to the long-term consequences and now we're almost a checkmate. Sorry. In 1992, former President of the United States, George Bush Sr. said, effective execution of Agenda 21 will require a profound reorientation of human society, unlike anything the world has ever experienced. A major shift in the priorities of both governments and individuals and an unprecedented redeployment of human and financial resources. This shift will demand that a, a concern for the environmental consequences of every human action will be integrated into individual and collective decision making at every level. Cutting through the code, I want everyone to consider what the words profound reorientation of all human society and unprecedented redeployment of human and financial resources actually means. For everyone here tonight not familiar with Agenda 21, I would suggest that this is the beginning of your learning curve, not the end. In 1992, Morris Strong, Secretary General of the UN Earth Summit and member of the Club of Rome said, it is clear that current lifestyles and consumption patterns of the affluent middle class involving high meat intake, consumption of large amounts of frozen and convenience foods, use of fossil fuels, ownership of motor vehicles, small electrical appliances, home and air workplace air conditioning and suburban housing are not sustainable. Put those statements together with the previous one and it must become clear that Agenda 21 is about controlling every aspect of our lives, how we eat, what we eat, how much we eat, how we move around, food production, the amount of food and where we even live. Dixie Ray, former Washington State Governor and Assistant Secretary for Oceans and International Environmental and Scientific Affairs stated, Agenda 21 seeks to establish a mechanism for transferring the wealth from citizens to the third world. Fear of environmental crisis would be used 
to create a world government and UN central direction. From a report in the 1976 UN's Habitat I conference, land cannot be treated as an ordinary asset controlled by individuals and subject to the pressures and inefficiencies of the market. Private land ownership is also a principal instrument of accumulation and concentration of wealth, therefore contributes to social injustice. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, if you work hard and you exercise good financial management and invest in property, you are contributing to social injustice. In a report from the President's Council on Sustainable Development, we need a new collaborative decision process that leads to better decisions, more rapid change and more sensible use of human, natural and financial resources in achieving our goals. And at the same time, Harvey, Harvey Reuven, Vice Chair of the Wildlands Project says, individual rights will have to take a back seat to the collective. J. Gary Lawrence, advisor to President Clinton's Council on Sustainable Development. Participating in a UN advocated planning process would very likely bring out many of the conspiracy fixated groups and individuals in our society.